monstrueux. And there were outright battles. I mean, we're talking hundreds of uprisings in 1929, 1930, where Ukrainian peasants, you know, essentially said, we're not going to have anything to do with your collective farms. Ukraine had lost its fight for independence after the Russian Revolution, yet gained some cultural freedom under the Soviets, at first. There was an increasing attention to Ukrainian national thinking and national distinctiveness within the Soviet Union uh, at the end of the 20s and beginning of the 30s. And this too angered uh, Stalin and the people in the Soviet leadership to the point where uh, they wanted to bring Ukraine under control and make it a Soviet possession just like all the other republics of the Soviet Union. Schools were more or less russified, all the dictionaries were removed and changed so that the language became closer to Russian. Major Ukrainian communist leaders were either put in jail or forced to commit suicide. Major intellectuals committed suicide, so this was a tragic blow to the Ukrainian peasantry and to the Ukrainian culture and elite. Remember, it took place in more or less five to six months. Political correctness is America's newest form of intolerance. And it's especially pernicious because it comes disguised as tolerance. It presents itself as fairness, yet attempts to restrict and control people's language with strict codes and rigid rules. I'm not sure that's the way to fight discrimination. I'm not sure silencing people or forcing them to alter their speech is the best method for solving problems that go much deeper than speech. Finally, the starvation tactics that were designed to eliminate the problem of Ukrainian nationalism and Ukrainian peasant rebellion forever. Thank God I didn't kill anyone. I didn't have anyone put away. And I yelled and begged and swore and threatened, of course. Anyone who doesn't bring in grain had better watch out for the punishing sword of the proletarian dictatorship. But I was a soldier then. I still believed in orders.
wanted to see the effects of the poison firsthand. It was also an opportunity to remove a thorn in his side. I had long known of their distrust. What kind of men they were. It was a betrayal. I should have foreseen. Ukrainians consisted mostly of Christians. They were victims of an anti-religious campaign. Breaking down religion is a common communist tool. Acts against Christians and humanity still occur till today. Compassion and humanity, as shown in Abraham Lincoln's famous quote, We are not enemies, but friends. We must not be enemies. Though passion may have strained, it must not break our bonds of affection. The mystic chords of memory will swell when again touched, as surely they will be by the better angels of our nature. This is simply not enough. The Hall of the Moor should be incorporated into the American educational system. It should be as well known as the Holocaust. Could something like this happen in America? I doubt it. Our founders knew human nature, to protect against any bad angels, they provided checks and balances as part of the government, the executive, judicial, legislative. The Constitution has worked for the last 236 years. The government still answers to the people. Although there is a constant struggle in America, we may have it right. <laughs> 